you jump. We're gonna do long division, don't cry. <laughs> okay, so today we're gonna talk about the division algorithm, which means I am going to make you do <laughs> long division. I feel guilty just writing it on the board because I've got so many students. All I have to say is long division and they start shaking and crying. You know, if I say fractions, they'll go running out of the room screaming. But this is one of those math concepts that really freaks people out for some reason. So I'm gonna to try to break it down. We're gonna to try to do it step by step so it's not so hard and it's not so scary. My hope is to prove to you today that long division really is the easy way. We'll see if you believe me. Let's give it a try. To give you a taste of some of the tricks that um, some people encounter that throw them for a loop. So let's get through them together. So first problem, 258 divided by six. Remember, um, long division switches order. So 258 comes inside, six goes outside. This says six into 258. So, 6 goes into 2 is the number I'm supposed to start with, and this is why I wanted to start this with you. Um, if I only have two things, there's no way I'm going to get a group of 6 out of that. So, the basic idea is that 6 does not go into 2. So, I want you guys to be really anal with me. If 6 does not go into 2, we need to have this space stay blank. And because a lot of my students forget that, I'm actually going to put an X right over the 2. Okay? And I promise you there's a reason why I'm doing that. Um, and mostly it's because lining up is really, if you can line up, you can avoid most of the mistakes that people make in division. So now let's try. Now I'm going to grab another number. And I'll ask myself, how many times does 6 go into 25? So 6, 12, 18, 24. That's 4 times. 4 times 6 is 20. Four. I write the multiplication fact here so that I can figure out how much I have left. 25 subtract 24 gives me a remainder of 1 and now I'll drop down an 8. New number is 18 and I ask myself how many times does 6 go into 18? Well 6, 12, 18, it goes in 3 times. And once again, I will probably be lazy, guys, and I will just cross off 18 because I know I used it perfectly. But if you don't believe me, 6 times 3 is 18. And if I were to subtract 18 from 18, I would, of course, just get 0. Okay, so why did I want to show you that? I really, really, really want you to be nice and anal that you line up the numbers here because what I want to see is I want to see the answer of my division lining up at the right hand side with the number I was dividing into. Okay? Okay. So, let's see. Can you tell what your answer is here, guys? 43. Now, let's try this problem. Um, again, I chose this one specially for you because this is one that 80% of my students get wrong. So I call these kind of problems the ones that separate my A students from my B students, um, if you get this right or wrong. So let's take a look. I'm going to do this problem. 7,254 divided by 9 can be rewritten as 9 into 7,254. Now once again, I'm going to be really, really careful about where I place my numbers. 9 does not go into 7, so I'm not going to put a number there, okay? 9 does go into the number 72. How many times does it go in? It goes in 8. I'm going to take a minute to sidetrack. If, if you struggle with your 9 times tables, I got a really great trick about 9s. Because 9s are one number away from 10, you can actually do the up 1, down 1 trick, as I call it. So 9 times 2 is 18. Notice how this is going down by 1. 9, 8. The next number is going to have a 7 here. And on this side we're going up by 1. This was 0, 1, so 27. Okay? So, again, up 1, down 1. So up 1 from 2 is 3, down 1 from 7 is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five. You guys see it? Next one would be five and four, six, down one, three, up one, seven, down one, two. You guys see my pattern? Up one, down one. Really nice to do your nines. Okay, so anyway, that was a side note. Nine goes into 72 eight times, right? And nine times eight is 72. Subtract that out, I have nothing, and I drop down a five. Now this is where my students mess up or get stumped. We've got to write an answer up here. How many times does nine go into five? And then my students will say, I can't, it can't go in. And I said, well, how many times is that? And they tell me, miss, it's no times. Well, what number means no times? Zero, zero means nothing. So how many times does it go in? Not at all, it goes in no times, zero times, okay? So, and then again, I usually don't bother to multiply zero times nine and say that zero and subtract it because I'm just gonna get to the same answer. Can you guys see how I got from five to five? So I tend not to bother and I'll just, once I place the zero there, I will allow myself another digit and it'll just drop down. Do you guys follow that? So if I put a zero up here, I then may have the next digit. So now I'm looking, how many times does nine go into 54? Goes in six times. Six times nine is 54. I have no remainder. I am done. So 7,254 divided by nine is 806. Okay guys, I want to do one more problem with you. I want you to get a taste of what happens when things don't work out perfectly. So we're going to do 753 divided by 8, or 8 into 753. Remember, it's all about the order. I've got to switch the order. Okay, so 8 does not go into 7, but it sure does go into 75. How many times? It goes in 9 times. And nine times eight is 72. Subtract to find out how much leftovers I have. 75 minus 72 gives me three. Drop down a digit. Eight goes into 33 how many times? Well, eight, 16, 24, 32. Looks like it goes in four times. And eight times four is 32. Subtract that, I have a one remainder. And you'll notice, I don't have any more digits to drop down. Okay, so basically, what we have is that eight went into 753 94 times. However, we have one little guy who got left over who didn't get it to make it into a group of eight. So for now, how we're gonna deal with him is we're just gonna write him as a remainder. Later, we will learn how to turn him into either a fraction or a decimal, but for now, We'll just say that's 94, remainder one. This is where my students really stress out. Um, when we start dividing by two digit numbers, a lot of times you guys will panic and freeze up and not know what to do. So I wanna show you a little trick, um, two different tricks. So here's the first one. Let's do 468 divided by 13. So again, that's the same as 13 divided into 468. Okay, now I know what you're thinking, Kate, I don't know my 13 times tables. And I say, that's fine. We'll do it just like we've done it in the past. If you don't know a times table, what we can do is we can build it through repeated addition. So, 113 is, of course, just 13. I'm going to go ahead and add another 13. 3 plus 3 is 6. 1 plus 1 is 2. I added two 13s to get this number. So, this is 13 times 2. Let me add another 13. Nine, I get three. I'm gonna add another 13. Uh, nine plus three is 12, carry the one, I get 52. And so when I can keep doing this, okay guys? Um, and the great news is the most 13s you're ever gonna need is nine of them. Because like I had said before, long division allows us to go one digit at a time meaning we'll never need to go past nine. Okay, so I could add nine 13, I mean, um, I could add the number 13 nine times, and that's as long as I'd ever have to go. But I'm actually gonna pause right here because I've noticed something. I've already gone as far as I need to go right now. Because although 13 doesn't go into four, it sure can go into 46. 
It looks like this is the closest I'm going to get without going over right here. So you ask yourself, well, how many 13s was that? Well, let's just count up our 13s. One, two, three 13s were added in the making of this number. So this is 13 times three. The three goes there. The multiplication fact, the 39, goes here. Let's subtract to see how much of this 46 I have left to work with. Um, I'm going to have to borrow. That goes up to 16. 16 takes away 9 is 7 and drop a digit. Now I need to take 13 into 78. I haven't gone far enough yet, so I'm going to continue to add 13s. Adding a 13 here, 3 plus 2 is 5. I'm at 65. I think I'll add one more 13. 5 plus 3 is 8. 6 plus 1 is 7. And so look, there it is, perfectly, 78. And again, people will ask me, well, how many 13s is that? Well, let's count. 1, 2, there's a 13, 3, 4, 5, 6. That was 6 13s, and 6 13s is equal to 78. And in this case, we actually have no remainder. Nifty little trick if you can remember it. So let's do this problem now. We're going to use the same trick. I definitely don't know my 37 times tables. So when I go to do 37 into 3,854, uh, life starts out real easy. Of course 37 doesn't go into 3, but it's really easy to tell that 37 is only going to go into 38 once. You see that, guys? And 137 is just 37. Subtract, I only have one left, drop a one digit, one digit and one digit at a time. And now you have to ask yourself, how many times does 37 go into 15? And the answer is, of course, it doesn't. And so what number means it doesn't? Zero. It goes in zero times. And then once you write a zero, then and only then you may have another digit. So I will now drop down the four. Okay. So, how many times does 37 go into 154? Now, you can guess. You might guess that it's four or three or four or five times, and you could guess and you can multiply. But I'm going to use the method that we learned where we do a repeated addition. So, I'm just going to start adding 37s. 37 plus 37 gives me 74. I'm not there yet. I'll add again. 11, 10, 11. Still not there. I'm going to add one more time. 148, real close to 154. I'm definitely not going to be able to get another 37 out of that. So how many times was that? That's 1, 2, 3, 4 37s. So 37 goes into 154 four times. And I have to write the multiplication fact underneath 148 to see how much left over I have. Let me borrow. 14 take away 8 is 6. Okay? So, again, I have no more digits to drop down, so this little number that's here is just a remainder. So my answer is 104 remainder 6. Now, I'm going to do one more problem, and this one's actually easier than the other two. I just wanted to point out to you that sometimes... You guys make things harder than they need to be, I swear. That math could be easy and simple. And what I want to point out to you is that this is actually the easiest number to divide by that I know. It's really, really simple. It's a very well-behaved number because everybody has their 25 times tables memorized, at least in this country, just about all of us. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Kate, that's just not true. How would I have my 25 times tables memorized? Oh, I just changed my mind about the number. Sorry, guys. Deal with me. <laughs> Let's do 6593. I like that one better. Okay, so where I was going with that, I argue that you have your 25 times tables memorized. And I know you're thinking my third grade teacher never made me do my 25s, Kate. No, that's not true, but I bet you've had quarters in your pocket. Have you ever had a quarter in your pocket? And I bet you could count your money, okay? And so if you can count your money, you can count my 25s, okay? So it's just like having quarters. If I had one quarter, I'd have 25 cents. 
If I had two quarters, I'd have 25, 50, right? If I had three quarters, I'd have 75. If I had four quarters, I'd have a dollar. Or in this case, 100 is what we're looking at. So how many times does 25 go into 65? Oh, sorry, doesn't go into six. I skipped a step. But it does go into 65. So how many times? 25, 50, goes in twice. And that's 50. Subtract that out. I get 15, drop a number nine. And again, my students start hyperventilating, 159. But seriously, guys, 25, 50, 75, a dollar, a buck 25, a buck 50. The pattern continues. So that's six times. Take out a buck 50. I'm left with 90. Drop my last digit here. That's a three. And how many times does 25 go into 93? Again, 25, 50, 75. It goes in three times. Um, definitely going to have to do some borrowing here. 13 take away 5 is 8. 8 take away 7 is 1. And it looks like I have a remainder of 18. So the homework for today's lesson is, again, in Quizlet. Um, it's entitled 1.5e long division. Um, and you should do it in learn mode. But as some of you guys have already figured out, learn mode can be pretty picky about how you type your answer in. Um, it only accepts it if your answer looks exactly like mine. So I don't want any of you guys to be confused about how to type in your answer when you have a remainder. Um, so this is how you're going to do it. When you want to type in um, an answer, I just did this problem for you. I did 6 into 353, and if you notice, I got 58 with a remainder of 5. Okay, so we've been writing in all kinds of different ways. We've been putting dots and points and spaces. But when you go to type this into Quizlet, what you're going to want to do is type the 5 and the 8. And then you're going to want to leave a space, capital R, with a 5. No space at all. If you type it in just like that, you'll be doing it the way I did it. And you'll get no problems um, with getting your answer marked wrong just because of your typing. Now, do remember, though, if for some reason you forget and you leave a space or you put a period or... You didn't capitalize your R. You can always hit the override. I think it's called override. But y'all know what I'm talking about, the I was right button. <laughs> Whenever you get marked wrong in learn mode in Quizlet, there's a little I was right button that you can press so that it doesn't stay wrong in your final score. Okay, good luck on this homework.